Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on Film Design 17. My name is Flavio Popescu, and today we are going to take a look at how you can model your projects in Fem Design and what kind of projects and um, types of structures you can use uh, Fem Design for. Today we are going to use um, Team Viewer. Um, go to webinar. Sorry. So please use the questions field here in the go to webinar window if uh, at any point you have any questions and we will go through them at the end of the presentation. We can also have a question session where I can actually give you access to microphone. And if you if you have microphones and speaker, you can we can also have a discussion live. But we'll we'll take that at the end. Okay, I'm going to start Fem Design. Many of you are already familiar with Fem Design 3D structure. For those of you who are not, um, every time I start a new project, I'm asked to select the Euroco National Annex. And for this one, I'll just choose the basic one. And this is my program. I have my tabs here, and they, um, Fem Design is, is uh, divided into several modules. Structural loads, finite elements, and analysis compose the analysis engine, the calculation engine, where you can get the results, you can get the internal forces and deformations on your structure. To that, there are design modules added, including foundation design, concrete design, steel design, and timber design. You can do a lot of things in Fem Design. You can do many, many things. Today, I'm going to show you I'm going to try to show the the most common used ones and hopefully uh, give you an idea of what you can do. If you have been using it before, that is fine. If you haven't, maybe it's, it is it is a, a way to discover how you can use Fem Design for other types of tasks that you might have. I'm just going to start with uh, just placing some, some elements. For example, placing columns. I can choose my section and my material. And I can choose it to place it above the cursor. And I'm going to just place it on my, uh, on my drawing canvas. Now, what, how I can place these columns is either by entering coordinates here, by x, y, z coordinates, or a very, very useful tip is to use F12. So if I have my first column and I want my second column to be placed six meters in x direction, I just hover above the first, the point of the first column, hit F12, Let's see what's going on. And enter the coordinates relative to the current point. So x direction is six meters, and it will be placed six meters from that direction. Now this is this is helpful and useful when I I I'm drawing my structure. It can I can very fast draw my structure. And I can try to make some columns in the other direction. I'm, I'm can, I can use these functions here, which are very similar to CAD functions. So if I use copy and select my columns, select a base point, and I'm going to enter 0 in the x direction and 6 meters in y direction relative to this point. So I can see that 
it'll it'll place them six meters in the y direction. So this will this will result in a very fast model. I can I can easily define my model. I also have shell elements, so I can draw plate by using the plate function. And I can draw walls. The same. I can define this the properties, with the thickness and material. I also have the option to define creep coefficients and shrink coefficients for my long-term analysis. This is a material property, so it will it will follow throughout my calculation and through my load uh, combinations through all of them, as it is a a material a material property. For now, I'm just going to leave it like that, and I'm just going to place my walls. Just a very simple structure um, to show you the basics of, of defining your geometry. Then I have the supports. I have point supports, which I can define the stiffness in all of my directions for motion and rotation. I can also enter plastic limit forces for my supports by entering a plastic limit force or a plastic limit moment in each in any of my directions and then perform a plastic analysis we'll get to that so i can just place my supports my point supports under my columns and line support under my walls These are the basic tools to define a model. Then they, we have the FemDesign uh, special modeling tools, which are point connection, line connection, surface connections, fictitious bar, fictitious shell, diaphragm, and the covers. Now these tools and these covers will allow you to model specific tasks and simulate different structural behaviors of course it depends on on your case and your specific task but you can do you can actually do a lot of things with these um, with these tools right here I am um, I will have some examples to show you how how you can use these for example the point point connection you can use to simulate the the bolt connections in a steel connection and get the forces in it. For those of who who came in a little bit later, maybe, um, please use the questions tab here to write down any questions that you have and we will go through them at the end of the presentation. Of course, you can also import an AutoCAD file and draw from the AutoCAD drawing. Model the structure from your AutoCAD drawing. There is also a, the, that option. You can either open a DWG file or you can also add an external reference and place it on your on your model on your drawing a very very useful feature in FemDesign 17 is this correct model tool. This correct model tool is, is designed to identify and fix different 
errors in your geometry, any um, any geometrical issues that you might have. As, as um, some of you already may know, you can also import a Revit analytical model into FEM design and perform instruction analysis. First of all, you, you would have to make sure that your analytical model is, is correct and uh, consistent in Revit, but you can also have the option to check it in, and correct it in FEM design. And this, is, this correct model tool will, will come in very handy. I will show you an example of this on, on this model and see how this correct model tool works. So as you can see, I have some, some geometrical issues here in my model. And I'm going to use this correct model tool. I'm going to select the whole model and I can see that I have these, these different operations that I can perform. Identical copies, overlaps, um, and, and, and um, several others, which can stretch or align regions and, and elements. So I can also select all and start. And it will identify each of these errors and point out the correction that it, it suggests. Now this is, again, this is a tool for, for you to use. And it is, it is also, you, um, you also have the option to correct the model here. If I say fix, it will fix it for me. It is also, it is recommended to identify these problems at first so you understand what the program and what fem design is dealing with it is very important to understand the the problem and the uh, the correction you you do have the option to say fix all and then click apply and fem design will fix those issues for you it is, it is, of course, best to keep these things under control and, and keep an eye on, on these corrections as FEM design will do them uh, automatically if you let it. So it's best to, to keep them um, under control and do it uh, one at a time or even just identify them and fix them manually. But again, a very useful tool when dealing with geometry. Okay, I'm going to return to my example here and look a little bit at loads, at the loads tab. Here is where you define your load cases. You can define a self-weight load case and define it as press structural dead load and the loads will be take the self-weight of the structure will be taken into account automatically and of course you can define several types of loads and load cases you can apply point loads line loads and surface loads you can also create load combinations with different types, ultimate limit states and serviceability limit states. And you can apply different types of loads, including temperature loads and stress loads, su support motion loads. It is also possible to add seismic load and define masses here i will i will take a look at this um a little bit further down the presentation but i just wanted to mention them right now we come to the macro loads here is actually a good time to introduce the cover function 
which I mentioned earlier. This cover is basically a membrane which you apply on your frame to allow the distribution of surface loads to the supporting structure. So if I just apply it like that, it will distribute the surface loads that are applied to it to the supporting structure. I don't need to apply it on surface elements as these will obviously take surface loads by themselves. But I now have the cover defined on, on, these, on these openings here. Now if I go ahead to loads and take a look at the wind load, I can select gener generic building. And first I have to define external walls. This, I just right click on my surfaces, my covers and my walls, and then point out where the external part of the structure is. This will allow the program to generate and apply my wind loads automatically. For my roof, I'm gonna select flat roof and just choose a direction. Then I can go ahead to generate wind load and set up my wind load parameters, the wind speed, the building height, and the terrain type. And the program will generate some loads for me. It will apply them on the structure and create load cases for me. These load cases I can use and I can include them in my load combinations. So this wind macro can save you some time when, when applying wind loads. The next tab is the finite elements tab. This is a very strong feature for Fem Design. It lets you customize your finite element mesh and your and your finite elements. One very important feature is the peak smoothing function. This peak smoothing function solves the singularity program, uh, the singularity problem of finite element software, where you get these peak values for your forces at the intersection of a column with a plate, for example. In the settings, you have the option to select auto peak smoothing region for different different cases. So it will generate this peak smoothing region around the elements that you choose from this list. I will show you on a example here. This is a plate modeled in FemDesign and have some loads applied on it. And these peak smoothing regions are created for the end columns where they intersect the plate. So this, this area here will be the area where the peak value of the force will be distributed. So we'll get a more realistic value and smaller results for your reinforcement. This is peak smoothing. Of course, Fem Design generates the finite element mesh automatically, but you have some tools to customize your finite element mesh. We can move forward to the analysis tab. Here is where you select your calculation setup. Go to calculate. I have here the different types of analysis that I can perform. I can see that I can perform a 
load combinations analysis and I can set up my load combinations according to what I want to perform. By checking these boxes, I select the type of calculation that I want. I, ha I can do a nonlinear behavior of structure elements to be considered in my analysis. I can do a I can choose a plastic behavior of structural elements, nonlinear soil behavior. I can do a cracked section analysis for uh, concrete structures. I can do second order analysis and perfection shape for second order analysis. And I can set the groundwater level. So there are, there are several types of analysis depending on your on your task. I won't go into details, um, but you have several options to choose from when performing a, a load combination analysis. You can also perform a stability analysis and seismic analysis. I will take a look at these a little bit further down the presentation, but this is where you choose to do eigen frequencies calculation and seismic analysis. Up to here is the 3D structure ana analysis module. So here, when I perform the analysis, I get my results and I can see the deformation of my structure and my reactions and the, for, the internal forces in my structural elements. On top of these, I have the design modules, which is, are the foundation design, concrete design, steel design, and timber design. Let's take a look at the concrete design. I have here a plate. I believe this is, if I remember correctly, it is for a swimming pool that was modeled in FEM design. So I can see that in the RC design tab, I have my results tab here. Where I can see my different types of results for my load combinations and for my RC design. If I perform a check on my plate, I will get the utilization for the reinforcement bars in X and Y direction and the bottom and the top. I can also see shell buckling and I also see shear capacity. I can check the crack width for bottom and top. I need to have a serviceability, a quasi-permanent serviceability load combinations to perform a crack width check. I can then have the option to auto design it using the auto design function, or I can also manually design it and put the reinforcement myself. This is how I can see where my reinforcement has been applied. As I have already designed this plate, I can see that I have a base net of 10 millimeters at a 200 millimeter spacing, and then additional reinforcement where they are needed. When doing this check and design, I get these results as well. Where I can see the required reinforcement in both of my directions and top and bottom. 
applied reinforcement and missing reinforcement. This is helpful to give me an idea of how much reinforcement I need, how much I have already, and how much is missing, so I have to apply it myself. Just take a look at required reinforcement Y bottom. And I have here the color scale. And I can see my results here. Just make them a little bit larger. So I have a maximum of 620 millimeters square per meter in this point, which gives me an idea of how much reinforcement I would need. Then I can set up my design parameters and customize my base net with the diameter that I want, the spacing, and I will get an area here for both bottom and top. This is the reinforcement for my plate. I can also take a look at bar reinforcement and choose to see RC bar utilization. And if I go to detailed result and right click on my concrete beam, I have here a detailed report of the calculations that are performed and the, the reinforcement bars and stirrups that are used. This section. And the section utilization. And I have the detailed report here, which I can add to my documentation. I can also do punching reinforcement for my punching areas. Then we have the steel design tab. I have a steel structure here. And I can do a steel bar design. I can do some checks. And I can also do an automatic design. And I can check my steel bar utilization here and get the detailed report as well. Those of you who work with steel, they are familiar with this. Since FemDesign um, 15, I think, we also have the steel joint design uh, module. The steel joint calculates the utilization of each steel joint that I have defined here, and also calculates the joint stiffness with FemDesign 17. So now I can actually have the stiffness calculated for each of my joint and have that stiffness applied on my structure. So I can calculate the rotational stiffness of the joint and apply it on my structure and then calculate, recalculate my model with the correct stiffness applied. So this is a big feature in Fem Design 17. I can also see my calculations for my 
steel joint design. I can see here the stiffness calculation as well. Another new feature in Fem Design 17 is the fire design tool. The fire design allows you to calculate a fire protection for your element or calculate its uh, behavior at fire action. So uh, if I perform a fire design check, I can get a new result, which is steel bar fire design utilization. see a detailed result and I can see the utilization for my for my bar subjected to a fire action I have here the temperature curve and this is the calculation with no fire protection at all so I can perform an auto design and choose a material from a list of predefined material library, a minimal thickness, a maximum thickness and the thickness increment. I can also calculate the maximum temperature of the element and set my limit utilization. I will design and the program will suggest a material and a thickness, but as I can see here, it is just not enough to cover my needs for my fire design. It's also a very small element, so I'll probably need to increase my element or choose a different element altogether. But it is the option to have a fire design with uh, Fem Design 17 new feature, uh, Fem Design uh, Steel Design Steel Fire Design. The same can be said about the timber design where it works as similarly to the steel design module where you do a verification on your timber element and see the detailed report of the calculations performed. So these are the, uh, the design modules. What I wanted to show you is another tool that you can use in FEM design. And this is modeling your structure as a shell element. So this, these uh, shell elements plane plates you can set them to you can set the material for it the thickness and you can basically model any type of structure in uh, in fem design you just draw the plate uh, you draw your your uh, elements using this plate set up the material set up the thickness add loads on it and perform an analysis and get the stresses in your shells. This is an example of a staircase designed in, modeled in Fem Design after a 3D AutoCAD drawing. So the 3D AutoCAD drawing was only lines, of course. It was uh, cleaned up a little bit. Um, 
since it had a lot of details that were not needed. And according to those lines, it was just applying shell elements and modeling an actual structure. Loads were applied on it, and the analysis gave a deflection. And this internal stresses. What uh, we're looking at right now is sigma von Mies maximum, the maximum von Mies stress in the shells. So you can get this stress and check it with with the utilization and the material strength. So there are a lot of a lot of options when it comes to this shell modeling. You can you can model a lot of things. You can also uh, define connections between between your elements and make them behave in, in any way you want. One more thing that I would like to show you is the seismic analysis. I don't know how many of you are doing seismic design. It is relevant for, for some regions. Um, here in Denmark, we don't do seismic design, but there are countries that do and uh, use FEM design for it. You can define your masses, start by defining your masses, or either by defining, defining them manually, or you can also convert load cases into masses. Enter a factor for your load case and have FEM design convert them into masses. Then you define your seismic load. You define your horizontal and vertical spectrum. And then you go ahead and perform analysis. First of all, you do a eigenfrequency calculation and get the vibration shapes. So you set up a number of shapes that you require and then run the eigenfrequencies. After you've done the eigenfrequencies, you can also perform a seismic analysis, which you can set up here. You have three different types of analysis, the static linear shape, static mode shape, and modal analysis. And then you can perform a seismic analysis. You will get some results. And you, you can combine them with your fundamental load combinations, or you can also see the seismic results separately. It is up to you. But you can combine them with the, the load actions as well. I think this is what I wanted to, this is what I had in plan to show you. Of course, if you have any other things that you would like to see, uh, please write them. I see there are some questions here as well. If I have a slab with many bays and some of them are one way, how are they modeled? You can set you can set your plate to have the stiffness in one direction. Uh, Bashar, uh, if I go to my plate here, uh, 
I go to properties. I can set this these stiffnesses in my two directions. I can set this E2 over E1. If I set it really low, then it will only be stiff in this green direction, which is X direction. So you can set the stiffness um, to be in one way. Um, you have to have separate slabs. You would have to have separate slabs to set the stiffnesses for each of them. Can you easily export reinforcement data? It is, uh, you can see the reinforcement on the model for plate. Um, so you can either see them here or and export these views to the documentation for the plate. You can also have them in a color coding and set the view uh, added to the documentation. This is a documentation module, which is a separate module in itself. So here is where you, you can set up your, um, your report. You can also use templates so you can use a predefined template which will have the, the results in it. So all the important results for that kind of template will be shown, will be generated automatically. You can also create your own template and uh, save it and use it in further uh, reports. I will have to check this, uh, Bashar. Uh, these questions will be saved, and I can get back to you on that. I have to check about this. I wasn't, I'm not sure about what case you are talking about, but I will check it and uh, come back to you. Yes. You can add manual reinforcement to the concrete bars. So if I have the bar reinforcement, I have the manual design, and I can add reinforcement manually. For my longitudinal bars and for my stirrup. So then I will I will be able to check all of the bars at the same at at once. So then I will have this check here with a list of all of my beams, and then uh, see the utilization.
If you design a plate that consoles out, can you see the tension in the plate where it is the highest, like a staircase with resting planes? Uh, Tobias, what you can see in the results here, after you perform the analysis, you can see the plate internal forces, bending moment and actual force and shear force, principal moments. And you can also see the plate stresses, top, membrane, bottom, uh, sigma X, sigma Y, and then tau, and sigma von Mies, and then sigma one and two. So you can see the stresses um, in your in your plate. Like in this case here, if I take a look at this deformation. I can see that I should have some, some tension there. You can define different types of foundation here. In the foundation tab, you can define soil and actually treat the soil as 3D finite elements and have it behave very, uh, very similar to a to the real uh, scenario. It would be very realistic to have it as 3D soil elements, 3D finite elements. And you have it, you will have an interaction with this upper structure. So you can define that. Uh, and then you have pile foundation, which you can uh, design. You can have isolated foundation, wall foundation, and foundation slab. Yes, for a reinforce for a beam. I showed that in this example here. I can see all my detailed uh, calculations performed here. So my uh, longitudinal bars with the respective dimensions, stirrups, Uh, shape C, I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Connection design with circular hollow section columns possible. Yes, yes, I think. Let me see. Steel joint is also standalone, so you can you can actually see the types of connections here that you can model. Also, a standalone version, we can, which can be used separately from 3D structure. So we have here all the types of connections. Um, so you have um, 
I think you said CHS, circular hollow section. Um, or these, which are not circular. So these are the types that you can do. Here for bracings, you can use circular hollow. You see the, the symbol here, so it shows you where you can define this. For columns, no. Column splice, beam splice, uh, column base, beam to beam, beam to column, knee joints, and bracings. So no, circular hollow section, you cannot define the steel connection yet. Let's say it like that. And unfortunately, I cannot upload the models. Yes, if peak smoothing considered over the column, uh, FemDesign will consider this in the design of the slab. Yes. You can check the shear capacity in the... Um, so what you can check in the plate is the shear capacity. We also have the utilization for it. Mm. You get it in kilonewton per meter. So you get the shear capacity in kilonewton per meter. It, you won't design the shear reinforcement. That is, uh, that is something that you have to do separately. It will tell you the shear capacity uh, in kilonewton per meter. If I take a look at the... Shear capacity here, it actually says it's okay with the reinforcement I have now. And so I can I can actually check. My shear capacity, the required, the applied. Again, in kilonewton per meter, and then the missing. So if I have to add any uh, extra shear capacity but it doesn't design the reinforcement for it. Yep. Um, please write me uh, again. I'm just going to show my de contact details again. This is my uh, contact details, my email, and my phone number. For those of you who are not using FemDesign yet, please go to strusoft.com under products, FemDesign, and get a free trial version here. Just fill out this form and uh, apply for a trial. And test it for yourself. And please write me or call me if you if you have any questions or queries regarding uh, FEM design. Thank you very much for attending, and um, I'll see you soon. Have a great day.